Welcome to this special edition of City Talk. The newly renovated Franklin Avenue Library opened its doors in late August, and the oohs and ahs can still be heard throughout the building. The Franklin Branch Library is pursuing the LEED Platinum status, which would make it the first municipal building to achieve the highest award from LEED. Today's show is all about Franklin, Des Moines Public Library Director Greg Hyde is going to show us all the green features in the building. Branch Manager Kathy Bagnani will tell us about the services and the new collection. And Deputy Director Sally Wisdom will give us a tour. Sally, thank you very much for taking some time to show us around. Where do we start? Well, I think we should start in our beautiful new children's area. All right, let's go. A, ser a series of community meetings and one of the things that the neighborhood really asked for was a beautiful new children's area and we have it here oh my and so in this small area we've got books these are mostly DVDs. new books new, books. Uh, new DVDs new CDs this is the first part of the children's area that the children will come into right inside the front door it's very inviting. There are stools for browsing, um, it is magazines. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. These are the picture books for the very smallest children. They're in browsable bins so that they can be leafed through with the covers on the front. As we move over here, you can see the outside of the story room. Um, and it's a bright, sunny room where we will have uh, story times, other activities for smaller children. Over here we have the children's fiction and nonfiction. These would be for a little older children. What will the children find in this collection? Uh, these would be books for um, early to mid-level readers. Some of them are series books, which are always popular. Mm -hmm. Children want to start a series and read all the way through it. Um, these right here are graphic novels, the ones that have mm -hmm. pictures as well as writing. Uh, these would be for children in uh, say grades two through five. Okay. Well, it's a very, very beautiful area. This area here is the separate teen area. This was another thing that the community really asked for. You can tell there's interesting lighting here. Oh, look at this. These are chairs that will hold a laptop oh, how or neat. a notebook. So the teens can actually work right here. That is really neat. Feature. And again, there's different carpet in here. Different interesting lighting. Yeah. And right next to the teen area, you've got the computer lab, right? These are public computers. We'll have 43 computers for the public to use. And what will and they be able to do with the computers? What, what can they access? They can get to the internet. Mm -hmm. um, they can do email. They can use um, Microsoft Office products, do resumes, uh, apply for jobs. Homework and research. That's right. This is wonderful. What a beautiful setup. Okay, and then we're moving to another section. This is interesting how it's all broken into different sections. That's right. Um, this will be the information desk. This is where the librarians will be for people who need help of any kind mm -hmm. with research or with finding materials. And the books and the materials in here, is this still part of teens? This is adults. This, this is adult. whole area is adults. Okay. Um, right over here we have audio books on CD and we have compact discs, okay. audio compact discs. Beautiful. And then you have your... These are magazines. Okay. And this is the reference collection. These are books that can't be checked out but can be used for research. Mm -hmm. 
One of the interesting things that we've done in the Franklin Library, uh, most people are familiar with the Dewey Decimal System, which of course we still use, mm -hmm. but we've also broken it down into neighborhoods. And we have a cooking neighborhood, a memoir neighborhood, um, a politics, and the environment. And it's more of a bookstore concept. Um, rather than just the standard library arrangement. I have the privilege and the responsibility of directing a Shakespeare troupe. It can be challenging, but it's always compelling, and it's always a learning experience. I learn a lot from what Shakespeare has written, and I learn a lot about what people bring to Shakespeare. Shakespeare is a treasure chest in terms of all the characters that he contains. You look at all those people inside that treasure chest, and you learn a lot about life. My name is Lorenzo, and I geek Shakespeare. Reducing, reusing, and recycling your household goods is an important contribution to our impact on our environment. So I encourage each of you to pitch in the blue bin and recycle more. Hey, Ace, can Bill recycle this? That's right, only glass jars and bottles can go into the recycling bin. The other glass is just trash. I'm pitching in. Hey, Serge, can Bill still recycle this? Fill up your blue bin and help keep service costs down. I'm pitching in. Hey, Cubby Bear, I got aluminum cans, soft drinks, and beverages. Can I recycle these? Let's all recycle, especially aluminum cans. I'm pitching in. Thanks for pitching in, guys. By recycling your household materials like plastics, paper, metals, and glass, you make our community cleaner, you increase the life of our landfill, and you generate cash. Thanks for pitching in. With Des Moines' new smart card parking meters, there is no need to carry around a pocket full of change. There are over a thousand parking meters that now accept the new smart cards. Use your smart card at downtown meters. Insert the card and buy time on the meter. Come back, insert the card again, and the remaining value is refunded back to your card. You can purchase smart cards at any one of the three vending machines, which are located at City Hall, the 3rd and Court Parking Garage, and the 9th and Locust Parking Garage. Get yours today and leave your change at home. City Talk is on location at the new Franklin Avenue Library. We've had a tour of this fabulous new building, and now we're going to visit with Des Moines Public Library Director Greg Hyde, who's going to tell us about the green features. This building not only looks good, it's actually good for the environment. Craig, tell our visitors about some of the energy efficiencies that you all have placed in the new library. Oh, there are many efficiencies that we've done. When you first come up to the building, you'll notice that on the roof, there are some strange structures that are atop our roof. And those are um, two types of solar collectors. One is a volta solar voltaic collector, which we actually generate our own electricity. Wonderful. And um, we generate about 50 kilowatts of electricity per day, and that's enough to run the library during most days on our own. During the hot summer months, when we we really have to use a lot of air conditioning, then we will pull power off the grid. The other type of solar collector is a thermal collector, which is actually a pipe mm -hmm. that has some a water glycol solution in it, mm -hmm. and that heats up, and we actually use that during the winter to heat the building, and we use it during the summer to heat our hot water. We can heat about 85% of our building by ourselves in the dead of winter just by collecting solar. That is a huge saving. It really is. Now, throughout this building, there is beautiful lighting, all different types of mm -hmm. lighting. Is that energy efficient? Because there are a lot of lights. There are a lot of lights, but the thing that you will notice is they're LED lights. We have both flu fluorescent lights and LED lights. And your incandescent light at home, let's just say you have a 100-watt light bulb. For your fluorescent light bulb, it's about 40 watts. The LED light bulb is only 10 watts, oh. so there's only 10 watts lighting up the same space. And when you first come into the building, it might look a little bit 
darker than usual. But then when you sit down, you notice that the light is right on what you're reading mm -hmm. or the light is right on the books. So it's a very efficient way and actually LED lights will take about 10 to 15 years before you have to replace the bulb. What a savings. What a savings. Okay, now windows. I know you're saving on lights, but there are a lot of windows all the way along Franklin. How is that helping with the energy? Here again, we're fortunate enough to have put in some very thermal efficient windows. These are windows that are double paned and some triple pane, and they have inert gases between the two panes of glass, which will allow no transfer of heat or cold mm -hmm. during the winter. So actually in the dead of winter, you can go up to the window, put your hand on the window, and you won't feel the cold. So it keeps the place very nice and toasty during the winter, very nice and cool during the summer. There are so many features. One of my absolute favorites you'll notice when you drive up to the library. Out front, there are, should I call them pumps? For cars, well, if you plug want electric ins, pumps. Electric <laughs> pumps. What, what do we call those? Those we're calling our electric recharge stations. Okay. There are three stations for electric cars. A person can drive up with their electric car and plug in and recharge their car. Being that we are generating our own um, energy from our photovoltaic cells, there will be just a small minimum charge for someone to come and while they're visiting the library, they can plug their cars in, recharge, and then drive on someplace else. And there are a few electric cars in Des Moines now, mm -hmm. but there will be more later. Wow, talk about a building for the future. Yes, we're the first library in the nation to have the electric charge stations. That's wonderful. Now, earlier we were talking about when we come into this building, the air we breathe seems to feel cleaner. Tell us about that, because you said there's a reason for that. Well, now, when you came into the library, did you smell any new carpeting smell, or did you smell any new furniture smell or wood Nothing. smell? Nothing. Absolutely. I didn't smell anything. That's a very good thing, and that's one of the reasons that we went with sustainable lead um, construction. Actually, those smells that you smell at home when you carpet your home, mm -hmm. those aren't very good odors that are coming out of your carpet. Those are VOCs that are being offset from the carpet while it is new. What we strove for is to achieve no VOCs or mm. very low VOCs. We didn't want those somewhat carcinogenic odors to be in the library. So all of your carpet, all of your furniture, and the wood has been selected from post-consumer recycled materials and materials that will not emanate any odors whatsoever so that you have a very clean and fresh environment. People with allergies will have a very good time in this building because there is nothing emanating from these materials that they could be allergic to. And also we have very good filtering in the system to take any odors out of the air that come in for one reason or another. Well, now you learn something new at the library every time you come, you don't go. you? <laughs> Tell us a little bit about the mechanics in, in this building because uh, we'll show a few shots, but you have a mechanical room where all of the, I guess the heating, the cooling, right. the thermal, what, what's in that room? Well, in that room, are, you will see a lot of pipes, and those are pipes that come from two different sources. From the roof, remember those thermal solar collectors, the hot water glycol solution that is coming down actually will be pumped through to the floor. We have radiant heating in the floor during the winter, mm -hmm. and also those tubes are taking the cooled, chilled water during the summer, pumping it through the floor and through something called a chilled beam. This is a technology that's been around a little bit, but it's just being applied to a lot of buildings. And if you will, think of a fancy radiator mm -hmm. that you take from your floor and you put it in the ceiling. And as cold air is piped through in the summer, there's a slow radiation of coolness that kind of just emanates by itself and cools down the building. During the summer, you have the warm water being piped through it, it's just like a gravity furnace in so much that from the radiator or the gravity furnace, this little bit of warm air is just slowly circulating through the building. So you don't have forced air. You have natural air and it's mostly being heated and cooled, generated by our own electricity and generated by our own solar power. It's absolutely amazing. I know you must be so proud of this building. Oh, this is, this is a real nice building and we're so happy that we can have this building that we can um, allow the citizens to come in and serve them with library services. 
Well, let's talk a little bit about staff and recycling because all of us do our little bit of recycling that we do at our offices. Will it be different for the staff in this building? For, for the staff and for the library users. Mm -hmm. the, when a library user is using a piece of paper and instead of throwing it away and it goes to the landfill, we will be, having put, we will be putting in place a full um, recycling system where that paper will be recycled as um, paper, mm -hmm. if we have any plastic bottles, any glass, that sort of thing, that will be recycled. And then we've even gone so far as with the staff, scraps from the lounge. You know, you eat your pizza and you have a little bit left over. It doesn't go in the garbage. It goes in recycle bins. And we will be using vegetable scraps and things like that that we will, we will be taking over to the community gardens that are nearby and using it for compost for the community gardens. Well, now that we're talking about the gardens, I noticed that there's also some special landscaping that goes with this building. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us anything about that? Well, we so many times you have buildings that are built and they put um, designer landscaping and designer trees that look pretty, designer bushes that look pretty. And we wanted to go one step further. Now, in addition to looking pretty, we wanted these um, trees, the grasses, and the bushes to be native to Iowa so that in the midst of the scorching summer, we wouldn't have to water them as much as a very pretty non-native plant. Mm -hmm. During the winter, we didn't want plants to be frozen out with a heavy winter um, frost. Mm -hmm. So these are plants that are native to Iowa. Iowa. These are plants that we don't have to go to um, great means to keep them alive. And also, this is promoting plants from Iowa. <laughs> plants that we should be proud that are growing here. Our Iowa natives. Yes. Well, Greg, thank you. This has been very helpful. Uh, I don't think people realize that there's more to this library than meets the eye. It's not just pretty. It's also healthy. Well, thank you. And for people that want to learn about more of the uh, sustainability, the green features. We do have an interactive panel when you come in that mm -hmm. you can learn about all of the other green features and sustainable features of this building. Just come on in, touch the panel, and learn more about this building. All right, thanks a lot. There's still more to come on the new Franklin Avenue Library. What's new in the collection and the services? We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll continue our visit. Stay with us. Des Moines, we have it all. John Busby with the Culture Buzz with another week of arts and culture here in the greater Des Moines area. My passion for the arts fully blossomed when I was in college. That's when I noticed that the great communities were the ones with a vibrant arts culture. So what do I do now? I share my passion with people through the conversations I have on my weekly radio show. I consider it a gateway to the arts for the people who listen. It's wonderful because they get to meet the artists that make this community really happen. My name is John and I geek culture. Reducing, reusing, and recycling your household goods is an important contribution to our impact on our environment. So I encourage each of you to pitch in the blue bin and recycle more. Hey Ace, can Bill recycle this? That's right, only glass jars and bottles can go into the recycling bin. The other glass is just trash. I'm pitching in. Hey Serge, can Bill still recycle this? Fill up your blue bin and help keep service costs down. I'm pitching in. Hey Cubby Bear, I got aluminum cans, soft drinks, and beverages. Can I recycle these? Let's all recycle, especially aluminum cans. I'm pitching in. Thanks for pitching in, guys. By recycling your household materials like plastics, paper, metals, and glass, you make our community cleaner, you increase the life of our landfill, and you generate cash. Thanks for pitching in.
Welcome back to our special edition of City Talk on location at the new Franklin Avenue Library. We have had a tour of this fabulous new building. We've learned about the energy saving features and now we're going to visit with Kathy Bagnani, the branch manager here at Franklin Avenue Library. Kathy, thank you for visiting with us today. Oh, my pleasure. Well, everything here is new. So my first question is, what about the collection? What do we have here and how much of it is new material? Well, we have about 105,000 items that includes books, mm -hmm. audio books, music CDs, magazines. Um, and of that collection, we will be adding, a, we will have about 8,000 new items in wow. the collection. And so that is very exciting. Some of those are old favorites that we've just gotten new copies of, and others are just brand new titles that were out this year. You know, libraries are so different. When you walk through this facility, it feels more like a bookstore. It, it just has something about the feel and the colors, and the, it's just alive. So when you look at the new materials, libraries just aren't for books anymore. No, they aren't, and in fact, there's a lot of information online that people can access on our databases here at the library also. Um, but the, uh, talking about the displaying, we, it's one of the features that we did try to go for with the collection is to have a lot of uh, face-out mm -hmm. shelving in different parts of the collection so people could see the covers of the books and it is a little bit more like bookstore marketing, maybe. I saw a few of my favorite movies on the shelf, so I know I want to double back and check those out. Uh, tell us about the hours. What will be the hours here at the new library? The hours will be 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday, 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. on Friday, and 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturdays. The room that we are in is the new story time room, and we have some beautiful shots of this. It is circular, and it is just beautiful. I mean, where did this concept come from? Well, I think the idea when the community was telling us in our planning meetings that they would like something special in our children's area, the idea kind of evolved to try to make a focal point somewhere in the children's area. And so after talking it over a bit, we decided a place where people could read during the afternoon hours or do story times during the mornings when we have our, some of our younger children here or our school groups coming over might be, make a nice special feature for children. Well, now if parents want to bring their kids over, tell us what's going to be offered for story time here at the new Franklin Avenue Library. Um, we have story time Monday through Thursday mornings, and we have one each day for um, a different age group. So we start out with our babies, baby rhyme time, on Tuesdays at 10.15, and we have a fun with ones rhyme time that will be on Thursdays at 10.15 a.m. Then we have toddlers who are three-year-olds, for the most two and three-year-olds, and they will be on Wednesday mornings at 10.15 and at 10.50. And then finally, our preschoolers for ages three to six, and they will be on Mondays at 10.15. We also squeeze in a, a story time and a craft program on Tuesday afternoons at four for after-school children up to about second grade and they can also come and hear a story. Okay. I also noticed, well, you can't help but notice that there's a beautiful teen area. Will there be different or special programs for teens at this new library? We are planning to hold special programs for teens, and those mostly will be on Monday afternoons after school. Um, we have a teen advisory board, and we will also have teen programs pretty much most um, Mondays. This library has an incredible amount of green and sustainable uh, features. So is that also going to be part of the programming offered here? It is. We've made a commitment to try to do at least one program for children, teens, and adults every month during our first year that has something to do with um, green living or environmental um, factors. And our first one is going to be on um, Tuesday, September 27th at 6.30, and we're calling that one the Energy Efficient Library. Our architect is going to come in and talk about all the green features of the building. 
and there are lots of them. There it, are. It's amazing. But, you know, that just goes along with the beauty is, is all of the sustainable features that are in this library. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the adults. You have book groups here, and, and you also have services for adults as well. We do. We have two book discussions every month, one in the afternoon on the first Thursday of the month at 1 o'clock, and one on the second Tuesday of the month at 6.30. So we have something for people who like to come during the day and also people who might like an evening program. We are going to be doing a little bit more adult programming this next year, um, but we also have a very active Friends of the Library group that adults yes. may join. Mm -hmm. And they do some programming and also do a lot of volunteer activities in the library to, to support our services. Of all the new things that are available in this building, what do you think people will notice the most in terms of services or the facility? Well, in addition to the collection, which I, I know our readers in Northwest Des Moines will really appreciate, I think they might appreciate the increased number of computers the most. There are so many more needs for people to apply for jobs using a computer or to do for students to do their reports and homework using a computer that I do think that they will really notice that we have a lot more of those available for them. So that, in addition to the collection, will probably be um, one of the things people will notice first. Okay. Well, Kathy, there is so much here. Um, I wish we had more time, but we're about out of time. I guess the biggest thing we could say to people is that you really do need to come and visit the new Franklin Avenue Library. But thank you very much for visiting with us and for sharing your brand new home with us today. It's been fabulous. Thank you so much. That wraps up this edition of City Talk. I hope you will join us again here on DMTV City Cable Channel. Every month we try to visit a different department and bring you new information about our community. Today's program can be seen again during the replays on the dates and times now listed on your television screen. You can also watch us online. Go to www.dmgov.org and click on Watch Live. DMTV is provided to the City of Des Moines by Mediacom Cable. The channel is in the digital lineup, so you'll find us 24 hours a day, seven days a week, on digital channels 86 and 97-1. I'm Amelia Hamilton Morris. Thank you for watching.